So I think it's also helpful to kind of draw a picture. Okay, we have a square base that has side lengths of x, and we have a height of h. Obviously, this is not going to be an accurate picture because it's not three-dimensional, but you get the idea. Okay, um, the surface area is 108 square inches. So surface area is 108. Now, it would probably be helpful if we came up with an equation for the surface area. Um, but let's see what else the problem is asking us for, okay? Because they just told us something about surface area. But if we look at the question, the question is, what dimensions, okay, so our unknown, we need to know X and we need to know H, will produce a box with maximum volume. Okay, so whatever uh, these problems here, so optimization problems, we're trying to optimize, either maximize or minimize something. Whatever they say that you're trying to maximize or minimize, that is the equation you're going to take the derivative of. Okay, that is the equation you're going to take the derivative of. We call that the primary equation, and we're going to take the derivative. Yes. I think that was a related rate problem. That was a related rate problem. Okay, so volume, that's what we're going to take the derivative of, so we need to come up with an expression for that. What would be the volume of this box? X squared times H. The volume of any prism is the area of the base times the height. So the volume here is X squared times H. Now, we got a little problem. We got three variables. Really, we can only have two, right? We're taking the derivative of something, um, and we only need one variable on the other side. So that means we are going to have to substitute here. This is why they told us about the surface area. Okay, This is why they told us about the surface area. The surface area here is our secondary equation, and we're going to use that to substitute. Okay, we're going to use that to substitute. <clears throat> so, our surface area. Let's think about the expression that would represent the surface area of this box. It's an open box. So, what's the area of the base? What's the area of our base? X squared. X squared. Okay. Plus, what would be the area of one of the faces? X XH, and how many faces do we have? We have four of them, four sides to this box. So 4xh plus x squared is our surface area. Yeah, you're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, you will. Why not? Darn okay, stop, stop. Okay, so we need to substitute into the equation that we need to take the derivative of so that we do not have multiple variables. Um, let's see here. We're going to, we, we've got to use this equation over here. 108 is equal to x squared plus 4xh. We need to solve that for one of the variables so we can substitute it into this equation so that we only have one variable. Which variable do you think we're going to substitute for? Probably h. Okay, yes, there's an x squared here and an x squared here, but we can't isolate that x squared um, so that it doesn't have another x in this expression, so let's solve for h. Let's solve for h. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to rewrite this just so that I can see things a little bit more clearly. Okay, if we are solving for h here, we need to start by subtracting the x squared. and then divide by 4x. Divide the entire thing by 4x. You can't factor on an x because the 108 doesn't have an x, and if you factor it out on the right side, it's not going to do you any good um, because then your h is going to be stuck. <clears throat> so you don't, you don't want to factor in this case. Okay, you're just trying to isolate the h. 
Okay, so we are going to substitute this expression right here for H in our volume equation. Now, we can simplify this a little bit to make life a little bit easier before we take the derivative. What can simplify here? If we're multiplying x squared times that quotient, we can cancel an x. This x in the denominator can cancel with one of those. So our volume equation is now trying to decide the best way to write this. I would write it as x over 4 times 108 minus x squared. Okay? That divided by 4, you can move it under the x. <clears throat> you can, but the reason why I moved it is because most people will forget that you have to apply that divided by 4 to the x squared as well. You got to apply it to both of them. Okay? So that's why I moved it instead of. I know it's tempting to just divide 108 by 4, but both of these terms have to be plus. Okay? So, if you want to take the derivative, you can take the derivative of 4. Now let's see what 108 over 4 reduces to. What? Because, I mean, you're, you're multiplying those two expressions, so it doesn't matter whether you're dividing the second one by 4 or if you're dividing the first one by 4. Overall, you're going to end up dividing by 4. You're multiplying fractions, okay? You're multiplying fractions, so you multiply across the top, across the bottom. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where that 4 is. Okay, so let's see what 108 over 4 reduces to. It does, it's not divisible. Oh, it is divisible by 4. Okay, so that's nice. So we have 27x minus, and I'm going to write this as 1 fourth x cubed, just so you don't look at that as a quotient rule, because it's not. Okay, it's not a quotient rule. So we are finally to the point, this is the equation that we are trying to maximize. Okay, we are trying to maximize volume. We finally got it in terms of one variable. So we can now take the derivative of the volume with respect to the dimension x, the side length of the base. So when we do that, we get 27 minus 3 fourths x squared. We're trying to maximize it, so how do we find maxes and mins when we have the derivative? Set it equal to zero. Those are our critical points. So we're going to set it equal to zero, and then we're going to solve it. So I would add the 3 fourths x squared, and then I'm going to multiply by 4 thirds. You need to get used to recognizing it that way so that you can do it without a calculator. So it's gone over here. We have x squared is equal to, well 27 over 3 is 9, so 4 times 9 is 36, and then we take the square root. Now, usually I emphasize, don't forget the positive and negative, but why do I not need the negative here? It doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative length of your side. So that says that the x dimension is 6, but we also want to know, we want to know all the dimensions. We need to know what the height is as well. Um, you can plug this in anywhere you want to, but really I would go back to the expression right here that's solved for h and just plug it in. Uh, 6 squared is 36, 4 times 6 is 24, 
108 minus 36 would be 72. Yeah, 72. 72 evenly divisible by 24, is that 3? I think that's 3. And let's look at what our dimensions were. Inches, 108 square inches was our uh, surface area. So um, the side length is six inches and the height is three inches. Okay, yes, it is a lengthy process. Will you have many of these on the exam? No, you won't, but you still need to know how to do it. We're going to look at several other examples, but right now I just want you to